Hi and welcome to the Optometry Times blog. My name is Dr. Dave Keating. I practice in Seattle, Washington. Uh, you know, as, as we see a lot of our patients, we realize that a, a good number of them are children and many of those children have myopia. In fact, we know that the, uh, the number of myopic individuals has doubled uh, since the 1970s, or at least the rate of myopia has doubled since the 1970s. And we ask the question, is there anything that we can do to actively slow down the progression of nearsightedness in these children? And we get asked that question by parents every single day. Well, the evidence is pretty clear that there's a couple of things that we can do. Uh, one of them is that we could potentially use atropine eye drops. And there's some research being done utilizing uh, low concentration atropine to potentially slow down the progression. That's not FDA approved, that's not available on the market yet, but it is something we want to be looking out for. One of the other exciting things that, uh, that we're utilizing is contact lenses more and more. In fact, multifocal contact lenses, specifically distant center lenses, have been utilized uh, over, over the years and in the literature to show that there could be even a 50% reduction in slowing. The one that we're using more and more in our office is the use of orthokeratology. And uh, what OrthoK can do for our patients is it gives them the freedom of glasses and contact lenses all day long, uh, which parents really like because they don't have to worry about their children losing their contact lenses while they're, you know, in a sport or in school and having to have solutions with them. And it also gives them freedom from having to worry about glasses getting broken or lost. The parent can control the environment that the child is wearing their contact lenses. We've seen great success with slowing down the progression of nearsightedness. In fact, in the literature, it's shown shown about a 50% reduction in the progression of, of nearsightedness. So if you haven't given that a thought and you haven't looked into doing this in your office, I'd highly recommend you look into it and consider it for your practice. We'd love to know what your thoughts are. Leave them below. In, uh, and thanks for joining us in the Optometry Time blog.